Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. We come to you every Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock right here on AM 590, The Answer. Well, we've come to the end of January, and what a month it has been. I am ready to see the end of January, folks. January is National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. And for those of you that don't normally follow this show, this show is brought to you by an organization called MillionKids.org. And that is because more than one million kids are trafficked around the world. We started way back in 2008, and long about 2010, we became the training and outreach coordinator for the Riverside County Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force. That's lovingly called RCAT for, for what it's worth, and they report to the Riverside County Sheriff. But it's all of Riverside County. Now, quite frankly, I'm very, very fond of the folks over in San Bernardino County, too. So we're not prejudiced one way or the other. But I do happen to report up through the Riverside County Sheriff to that task force. So with January being National Human Trafficking Task Force Month, or excuse me, National Human Trafficking Awareness Month, we are always very, very busy holding events, uh, you know, educating people, holding events out. And uh, this past week, we did one out in Beaumont where we educated parents. And of course, um, yesterday was the big Seroptimus event in Riverside where we had uh, Sheriff Chad Bianco and uh, DA Mike Hestron and and uh, Larry Gonzalez, Chief Gonzalez out of Riverside Police Department. And, and um, even Karen Spiegel from the uh, Board of Supervisors. So what an event this is. <clears throat> and a lot of this is just about educating the public. A lot of times when I go out in public or I, I have dinner with friends, they'll ask me, is this really, really serious? And it, does it really go on? So I thought maybe today what I would do is kind of just share with you some of the facts and misconceptions about trafficking. And I'll talk a little bit about labor trafficking and sex trafficking. And we're also going to cover a little bit about the difference between smuggling and trafficking, because if you listen to the evening news, there doesn't seem to be much difference. But there is, there's, there's a connection, but they're not the same thing. So let me just kind of start out by saying that that human trafficking is one of the fastest growing crimes in America, uh, quite frankly, right along with sextortion. And I think sextortion may be much more prolific than sex trafficking. I'm not one of those people that believes that sex trafficking especially is taking place everywhere in California. There are a lot of activists out there that will make statements like that and throw out these huge numbers. It is a lot more than I think that the average person believes there are. And uh, they may not really understand what what trafficking is. They get some uh, uh, people out there throwing out big numbers or suggesting that, that there's all kinds of crazy uh, things going on. Um If you see human trafficking, I will tell you it is very, very horrific, Uh, but I don't believe it's everywhere. I do believe it is growing, and with the passage of the new bill that you hear me talk about, SB 357, that is the bill where law enforcement can no longer intervene with loitering to solicit for street prostitution. So in essence, law enforcement can intervene in adult prostitution. So let me kind of back up a little bit and give you some ideas about what trafficking is all about. And then we'll talk about some of the cases that have been discovered right here in the Inland Empire in a big way. But trafficking, there's a difference between trafficking and um, smuggling. Let's start with that one. In smuggling, you come into our country and you cross the borders. And the last I heard, that was illegal. Uh, Nobody likes to hear that term for whatever reason, but we do have federal laws and uh, they should be enforced, whether you're in California or Texas or where. Uh, I am not a fan of this idea of sanctuary cities because 
Uh, I believe no governor has the right to say to the people of their state, you know, you can abide by this law and we're going to enforce this law, but we're not going to enforce the laws we don't agree with. If we're going to not enforce laws, then we ought to have elections where we change the law and you have a right to say so. But if you come into the United States and you do not have documentation, then you most likely are being smuggled in if you're not coming in through the the normal sources. And that means you're most likely paying a coyote to bring you in here. Now, that does not make you a victim of human trafficking. In fact, it makes you a criminal, whether they want to enforce it or not, because you've broken the law. But you're not yet a victim of trafficking. But once you get here, if your coyote says, hey, I need some more money or I'm going to hurt you or I'm going to hurt your family or I'm going to hold you in a drop house somewhere. And they do that right here in our communities and in a much bigger way than you would ever imagine, especially with the open border problem. So if they're asking you for more money or threatening your family, which is the most common kind of thing you will hear there then that all of a sudden, you're no longer being smuggled, just being smuggled. You're now a victim of human trafficking. Human trafficking is derived or defined, probably would be a better word, by four main elements. Uh, there's, There's some others, but four main ones, and that is force, fraud, fear, and coercion. So coercion is a threat, big fancy word for the word threat. So if someone is being brought in and they say, if you don't give us more money, we're going to hurt you, that's a threat. So now they are a victim of trafficking. Or if they put them in one of these drop houses and they're not free to go, they're now a victim of trafficking. So they may be smuggled in, but that does not make them a victim of trafficking until they get into force, fraud, fear, or coercion. And at that point, they are now a victim of trafficking. And men get trafficked too, especially with our open borders now. And so that is how that all works. One of the things I would just share with you is one of the things you can do to keep an eye out is join in on your neighborhood watch. And if you have a vacant house in your territory, in your community, and suddenly a bunch of cars show up or people move in and keep to themselves and they don't interact, and maybe they have a lot of cars coming and going, or maybe just a few cars, or maybe they have cars coming and going with a lot of men coming in and out late at night, you know, report that. Report that to your local police department. Or if you want to report it anonymously, you can do that by uh, calling one 888 And so that is what it basically, if you have trafficking, It is if they're holding you against your will, if they're threatening you, if they're threatening harm to you or threatening your family. That is what you will most likely hear from someone who's come in from out of the country, whether they're coming in from South America or China or Russia or uh, Guatemala or any of the other places. If they're being held somewhere, pay attention to what is going on in your community and do not be afraid to report it if you see some unusual activity there. Now, if you see somebody in trouble, of course, you call 911. You don't wait for three, four, five, 10 days until somebody can investigate it because we have a lot of activity like that. But that's the difference between smuggling and trafficking. One, smuggling is a crime against a border. And the other one is trafficking is a crime against a human being that involves force, fraud, fear or coercion. And so what happens here is that many people who come in without documentation end up being trafficked. But many people who are being trafficked in our community come in from out of the country with documentation. Now, this is what we call foreign national trafficking. We're going to talk about domestic trafficking here in the next segment. That's when our kids get involved in trafficking, and suddenly it looks a lot different to you. And we'll finish out uh, the rest of the hour talking about what that looks like. 
But these are people who come in from out of the country. They may come in with documentation and be legal, or they may come in without documentation and not be legal. But if they are being threatened, if they're being held against their will, if their family is being threatened, if if uh, you know they have any kind of coercion or force or fear or they're held against their will, they are a victim of trafficking right here in the Inland Empire. And yes, it's happening a lot more than you realize or that you know. My name is Opal Singleton. This show is brought to you by MillionKids.org. We are up against that break, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you tired of eating at the same old restaurants? Let me tell you about a fabulous Italian restaurant we found in Riverside. Mama Mia's Italian Restaurant. Their caprese salad is exquisite with candied balsamic glaze. All of their sauces are special recipes using only the best olive oils. The salads are fresh and healthy. They offer a wonderful array of pastas, including shrimp scampi, capellini, bolognese, and lasagna. They're famous for their gourmet pizza, and you can order online for takeout or have a special date for dining in with family and friends. Mamma Mia's caters special occasions and hosts private events. You have to try it out. Mamma Mia's Italian Restaurant, located at 10971 Magnolia Avenue in Riverside, one block north of La Sierra on Magnolia. That's Mamma Mia's in Riverside. Be sure to tell Michael, Alex, or Joseph you heard it on AM590, The Answer. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of MillionKids.org. I believe the four most powerful words on earth are, I believe in you. So we created a challenge coin that says, I believe in you on one side and stand tall, you are loved on the other side. This one-of-a-kind challenge coin is a perfect gift for birthdays, anniversaries, graduation, Christmas presents, or just an anytime gift for someone you love. What a powerful message for a parent or a grandparent to give to a young person. This two-inch coin is made of polished gold. It's striking to look at, and it is priceless to hold. It is packaged in a beautiful black velvet gift box. What a great way to leave a legacy of love that will last forever. To purchase this coin, go to millionkids.org slash gallery. Each coin is $25. Go to millionkids.org slash gallery to purchase and give a legacy of love. Real estate sales in the Inland Empire are really hot. Sellers and buyers recognize that these low interest rates will not last. Sean and Colleen at Caldwell Banker Armstrong Properties in Riverside are proud to sponsor this show. They are the best in the Inland Empire. They're fair, honest, creative, and they care about you and your situation. If you're in the market to buy or sell a home, call Sean and Colleen at 951-529-4066. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited, Rhymes and Technology. My name is Opal Singleton and we're talking about the human trafficking right here in the Inland Empire. And what is the reality of it? Not the hype, not all the hysteria, but what is the the reality? Well, we have foreign national trafficking cases right here in the Inland Empire. And then later I'm going to talk about when your kids get involved and it's domestic trafficking. But I don't know if you're aware of this, but we had a case out of Colton, and it was called the Paredes case. In that case, they brought in young girls who were 14 or 15 years old. They actually thought they were going to work in the family business. Well, they did. It's just that the business wasn't the business they had envisioned. Now, this case was actually discovered up in Ventura. And believe it or not, a lot of our cases, a lot of the people who are being victimized, either end up in the Inland Empire or they start from the Empire, Inland Empire and go up to Las Vegas or out to Ventura, oftentimes to Fresno. But uh, many of the rings that we have seen seem to kind of cover from Ventura to Palm Springs and they'll go out to the Coachella Valley. The Paredes case brought in these 14-year-old girls and we're putting them into uh, the family businesses of massage parlors and skincare businesses. They were actually being forced into prostitution. Now, they thought they were going to come up here and go to school and have the, the American dream, but it didn't work out that way. Now, the people that were doing this to them were uh, people from Mexico that have come up here and established businesses, and they are running these basic commercial brothels out of commercial businesses. 
but sometimes they are already operating out of residences. Residences, I can't say it, residential areas, let's get that right, out of housing, let's choose a lesser word. Anyway, so that's why you'll want to watch housing in your area. It can be two different kinds of ways. It can be like a temporary residential brothel where you might have a vacant building in your area, and suddenly what will happen is a, a van will show up with a bunch of people in it, and uh, then a bunch more people, and you're saying, are they moving in? Are they doing construction? What's going on there? And they will be there maybe six, eight hours, and they pick up and move on. And they t- and they especially will use a vacant house or a vacant um, commercial building for that kind of thing. So keep your eyes out. If you see something like that, don't be afraid to report it to the police and let them investigate something like that. But a lot of times they will rent properties. And uh, these can be all nationalities, by the way. Uh, They're not all Hispanic. They can be, um, you know, from Taiwan or from China or Thailand. And in this case, they'll rent either apartments or they'll rent uh, houses or even the backs of houses. And suddenly you see a lot of male clientele showing up. Uh, The same kind of thing with massage parlors and businesses that operate late at night. I've seen trafficking in uh, the tops of um, cantinas or bars or in a, the back room of a bar, of a small mom-pop kind of bar that's heavily um, uh, attended by males. And so what will happen there is they will bring in girls and you know they might bring them in from China or from Thailand or uh, from Guatemala, uh, they can be any any of the you know Eastern European places, and um, literally those poor people are brought in and they are not free to go. This is some of the most horrific trafficking you can imagine. And in these cases, that what will happen is they set them up on dates. They may advertise on sex sites, uh, and then you go in and you have no idea, and you you want to believe that these people are being treated right and they're there willingly and they want the money. Most of these are like cartel driven kind of thing, uh, organized crime. And the the poor victims are just, uh, you know, it, it's just a horrific kind of thing that happens. They're, they're coming into the U S they're excited. They think they're going to have a life. And the next thing you know, they are put in these situations Those kinds of things are a little bit more difficult for law enforcement to find if people don't report them because they move the girls around a lot. And, um, you know, the same girl will be moved to maybe seven different cities over a six week period. And she often doesn't know where she's at or what she's doing. I mean, well, she knows what she's doing, but she won't know where she's at and, and, uh, uh, you know, where she's going to go next. And she does not get that money. And it's mostly she's, by the way, mostly females. And they often don't speak the language, uh, but they're they're there. They're forced into that. But here's the reason why trafficking becomes so sad in those cases. And that is it, it isn't just commercial sex. These people don't have a choice. Uh, they are put out there. The, the organization takes almost all their money. In fact, many of them not only take all their money, but they charge them for the the ad that was placed or the location where the activity is taking place. And, uh, and so they end up owing their captor more money than when they started out. And they will never be free. And that's why you often will hear the term modern day slavery. In its own way, it is, because these people came in thinking that they were going to have a life and they literally are trapped and can't get free. And these need to be reported because nobody, nobody, man, woman, child, nobody should ever have to go through that. Now, it's going to get a lot more difficult to find out how all this is working and who's being trafficked and who's there willingly. Because SB 357 makes it so law enforcement can't intervene unless, you know, they can prove that this is significant trafficking. But in this case, what is happening is that that the people are brought in, they're moved around, they're treated badly, and they do that facility needs to be reported. Now, here's what I want you to know. Do not go marching in there yourself and say, is this a brothel? 
do not do that. You're dealing with organized crime, and that isn't the way to go. I always say I don't want grandma down at the motel taking on the cartel, okay? This is the kind of thing you need to just report and even report it anonymously so that it can be investigated. But don't hold back on the reporting. You know, if you're if you think it is, then it should be reported. But what I want you to know is this is not taking place everywhere. This is very selective. And that's why it's so hard to find. And that's why I take the time to educate you so that you will know what is going on and that you will recognize something being at at stake there. Most often, the reports that we get is, is starts out with, there's just something not right going on here. Now, I can't give you all the details, but I can just tell you there's a lot of people coming and going. They're all hours of the night. I see different people out there. I don't want to get involved, but that's how it works. And that's how we often get our reports. And so don't be afraid to do that. But we do have people from out of the country that are being trafficked right here in the Inland Empire. And we need to pay attention to that and not be afraid to report it. I'm going to give you that number one more time where you can report anonymously. Now, keep in mind, this is not 911, so don't expect it to be. And you will never hear about it again until if it is a situation that we take down, you will hear about that. But nobody will report back to you. But it's 1-888-373-7888. And that is the National Reporting Hotline. Now, what I want to talk about next is something that is near and dear to my soul. And that is when our kids get caught up into human trafficking. And yes, it happens, and it happens a lot more than you know, but it is not happening to the bulk of our kids. The reason why I want to share this with you is to learn how you can literally protect your children and protect your family against human trafficking. The challenge with working with human trafficking when it involves our kids is that it just seems like it's surreal. And the other real challenge with it is the fact that so many times it's those kids that already are greatly challenged. 60% of young people in Southern California that are engaged in commercial sex are from the foster care system. And it's mostly foster kids, homeless kids, runaway and pregnant kids that are really, really at risk. So I want to talk about a little bit about how that goes on and how that happens. But I also want to share that with you because I know this does not have to happen. They're looking for the people that are available and vulnerable, the same as we talk about with sextortion. And, uh, you know, the way that we help these kids is make it so it's easy for them so that they're not available and vulnerable and that they know people believe in them. And that's how we keep our kids out of trafficking. So I want to go deep into that in the next section. So I'm going to ask you to stay with us. We're up against that break. Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by Internet, more than 6 billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses and their parents are technophobic. Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. 
Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. Million Kids takes checks and credit cards. Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton and it's National Human Trafficking Awareness Month winding down. So I thought I would take this time to talk to you about facts and misconceptions about trafficking here in our community. So I do want to take a minute and thank each and every one of you that have supported the work of Million Kids over the past few years. It's been um, an interesting journey. I started this in 2010, and uh, it, I've I've learned so much and seen so much, and I've seen good and I've seen bad, and I, I've seen near misses. And so that is the reason why I do what I do is I, I want to be able to say never again should this happen. So let me just explain about California law right off the bat. So the law changed this year. They rewrote, uh, actually it was, it goes in effect this year, 2023. It started in 2021 and passed in 2021, but you guys didn't get to hear about it till July of 2022 when uh, we'd gone through all the recall elections and the uh, preliminary elections, and suddenly this bill gets signed and it doesn't um, doesn't really uh, get a lot of publicity. But what happens is that they have uh, a bill, SB 357, that says that you can now solicit, you can now loiter to solicit for street prostitution and law enforcement will not be able to intervene. So that's assuming you're an adult. And so you're going to see your community change. You, Those of you that follow this show know it just really, really ticked me off when that happened. Because I just think that it is a sad state of affairs if you have to get down to doing that. So, you know, let's talk about adult commercial sex. If you're 18 and that's what you choose to do, that's your business. And you can do it now and law enforcement will not intervene. Here's the problem with that. A lot of these kids are 17.999 or 18.1, and law enforcement is not going to be able to help them. And they usually get started out by saying, well, you know, I this is what I want to do, you know, and this is what I, uh, how I'm going to make my money. And, you know, you see them in uh, webcam sex and housewives, you know, doing all kinds of webcam sex and creating amateur pornography or working at some of the strip clubs or simply making up sex ads. And there's plenty of them on the dating sites and the sex ads. And uh, they start doing their own commercial business. And that may work out for them initially. But in, I know the business well enough, uh, having worked with helping people get out of the business for a long time, that it never turns out like they think. Somebody will come along with them. Uh, maybe uh, maybe it'll be a favorite client that starts to groom them. And the grooming process takes place whether you're. this happens to our kids and it happens to adults. And suddenly it looks like a boyfriend. And, uh, you know, gangs are prolific at this. They, they really are good. Uh, there is a famous gang up in... Uh, Fresno that was operating all over the U.S. And they would put their kind of middle-aged gang guys on those dating sites, and they would develop a relationship with, you know, lonely uh, divorced women or uh, maybe widows or just somebody who was single. And, and they wouldn't immediately go out and hook up with them. They would begin to work that relationship. And you, you often hear about these in romance scams. But they'll start to look like somebody who cares for you. And that's immediately what grooming is all about. 
they you start to trust somebody you tr- uh, you let them in your life you believe they care for you i'm always uh, talking to young kids young girls and i say you know do not be out there looking for somebody to take care of you because if you need somebody to take care of you they're not going to take care of you the way you expect and the price we're being taken care of instead of being responsible for yourself is very very high I wrote a book uh, quite a long time ago, but now it's still very good. It's still getting good numbers on Amazon called Seduce the Grooming of America's Teenagers. And it's all about how these guys come in and tell you everything you want to hear. And, um, you know, they they start to challenge the relationship to increase your loyalty and the fact that you will defend them and like that. Well, that will often happen even with adults when they're out there. It's like, well, you're not making enough money. You're not charging enough or let me handle your social media. You know, I can make you famous. And pretty soon you have an alliance that involves your Uh, being responsible for the income, let's say it that way, and um, them taking a portion of the action or and or starting to give you quotas or starting to share drugs with you and and uh, keep you uh, out there regularly. And suddenly that life has changed, even if you started into it willingly. And so we see that on a regular basis. Well, for our teenagers, it's really those kids, and it often happens at a time that I call the life event years. I learned that from Dr. Gary Jorgensen, by the way. I'm not responsible for that. But from the ages of 12, 13, 14, and sometimes lately we're seeing at 11, they start hooking up with people on the internet, or maybe at school, or maybe at the mall. And uh, the girl is fascinated, especially when they're like 13, maybe he's 18 or 21, 23. And, you know, she starts really getting uh, loyal to him, uh, you know, abnormally loyal. And that is a fantasy relationship. We all get them. That's how those dating sites work. We begin to go on and you say, you know, well, maybe this guy really, really cares about me. And, you know, my folks are always putting me down, but they think I'm hot. Or if you're a foster kid where you don't have that core relationship, that's easy prey for them to come in and take on the role of, I'll be responsible for you. I'll be your core relationship. I'll take care of you. And pretty soon they have you out moving around. So the way this works is force, fraud, fear, or coercion. Now, if you're under 18, you don't have to have force, fraud, fear, or coercion. You just have to be put into commercial sex and you are automatically a victim of trafficking. The problem of it is, is once a young person gets out there, these guys take such total control of their lives that it is very difficult for them to, number one, understand even where they're at and how much their life is deteriorated. And number two, they're terrified to try to get up. For one, they don't want to make the guy mad or, uh, you know, they can be beat if they're if they try to run or if they try to get out there, they feel responsible And that is one of the problems with human trafficking is that the victims often feel responsible because they made the initial choice to get into it. And then they go, well, you know, if if he beats up on her, she's like, well, it's my fault. I didn't earn enough money. I I know better. I'll make more tomorrow. And it becomes a very difficult thing. There are more kids in trafficking in Riverside County than you're aware of. And in fact, we just heard a statistic, uh, one of the um, investigators of our task force heard a statistic that in Las Vegas, Los Angeles, and Fresno, of all the girls that are out on the street, more of them come from Riverside County than any other county. So we are what you call an origination site. Okay, that and where they come in, they seduce our kids and poof, they're gone. And that's exactly what happens. They will move you almost quickly out of anywhere, you know, Uh, number one, they don't want anybody else in the family intervening. And number two, they want complete control of that young girl. And so that is often how that happens. 
and then they will start putting them out. And usually it's on sex ads. Now, the sex ads are more complicated than you know. Most of you aren't aware that those um, those servers on those sex ads are in what they call bulletproof hosting. They're in third world countries. And they are collecting your data. By the way, if you're using live streaming, they are also recording you on those, a lot of your interactive um, webcam sex and like that. They're all operating out of countries where, you know, they're not going to get convicted for child pornography or if they're transmitting it. And yes, if you have a an image going back and forth and they're under 18, that's called CSAM, Child Sexual uh, Exploitation Materials or child sexual abuse materials. And, you know, if you're the recipient of that, you can pay a very big price <laughs> because, you know, the, the uh, sentences on those are often, you know, 20, 30, 50 years. And we've had several cases right here in Riverside County where people have gotten that kind of sentence. So with that, uh, I'm going to come up against a break and we'll close out on what to watch for and how to report it. So we're going to ask you to stay with us and we're going to be right back. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. I want to tell you about a book I wrote called Seduced, The Grooming of America's Teenagers. It's all about how predators access, groom, recruit, and exploit our young people using social media, online gaming, video chat rooms. Technology is changing at the speed of light, and we have to understand how to keep our kids safe from predators. So you can get this book by going to www.meandkids.org. It's $16, I'll sign it, and I'll ship it to you personally. We hope that you will order this book, educate yourself about how to keep our kids safe in this day of changing technology. Join us each Saturday for our radio show at Exploited Crimes and Technology at three o'clock on AM 590, The Answer. Custom Service Systems, a proud supporter of Million Kids, is a family-owned and operated commercial cleaning company servicing the Inland Empire and surrounding areas since 1974. CSS takes pride in their ability to maintain the business facilities they serve and their long-lasting relationships with their valued clients. CSS provides a variety of cleaning systems customized to client needs, including deep cleaning and disinfectant to be COVID-19 compliant. From basic office cleaning to windows and floors, CSS will clean up your mess so you don't have to stress. Custom Service Systems cares about families and communities and wants to give back. Custom Service Systems are proud supporters of Million Kids to keep kids safe from predators. If you need the best cleaning services for your business or corporation, contact Custom Service Systems at cssclean.com. Again, cssclean.com or call 951 781 934 That's 951-781-9345. You will know you found the best. Custom Service Systems. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Let me tell you about my friend Doris Anderson at Remax Realty in Upland. She is amazing. She's kind, she's patient, but she listens. And she's informed and she will help you with your real estate transaction in a way that works for you. Doris, in full disclosure, often supports the work of Million Kids because she cares about young people. But she knows how to analyze a market, how to market a property, and how to find just the right transaction for both buyers and sellers. If you're looking to buy or sell real estate or invest in income property, contact Doris Anderson at Remax Realty 951-733-8899. That's 951-733-8899. 951-733-8899. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. We are talking about facts and misconceptions about trafficking, especially right here in Southern California. So what you're seeing here is that you see commercial people that are or people that are being used commercially brought in from foreign countries and put out in businesses and like that here in uh, Southern California. 
By the way, I want to make something very clear that, uh, you know, the exploitation of another human being has not been legalized in California. It is the soliciting, lorting to solicit for street prostitution, whether you're buying or selling. But the other one is when our young people get caught up in it. And, uh, you know, trust me, our law enforcement is monitoring those sex sites. And if they see someone on there that they think might be a minor and, uh, you know, they will they will pose as one of those people to set you up to see if you're willing to have sex with a minor. You have sex with a minor. It will change your life forever, but not in the way you're expecting it to. Because there is strong law enforcement in both these counties here to protect our children and also to protect our children against pedophiles. And having sex with someone under the age of 18 makes you a legitimate pedophile and you will have a lot of consequences that go with it. So if you see something going on and you're not sure what to do, the thing I would tell you is be careful about intervening. I have absolutely no problem reporting. You know, you can report to your police department or if it's a a long, longer term situation that you can report anonymously on the national hotline, that's the best thing to do. But be very, very careful about be, in, intervening yourself. These are the kinds of things you need to call into law enforcement. They know what they're looking for. But I will tell you that the best way to prevent sex trafficking, especially sex trafficking of minors, is to have your church, have your organization, have your your family foundation, support programs that help young kids, especially as they're 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. Those areas, if they're in foster care, if there's been a, a divorce in the family and the child is circling back and forth between parents, they're extremely at risk. And especially if they're on social media, so many of our kids reach out looking, thinking they're, in some cases, they think they're just playing. In other cases, they get a fantasy relationship that they hide. In some cases, they end up being blackmailed. You've heard me talk about sextortion. But in many of these cases, what happens is that, that gangs and pimps will use social media to meet especially young girls online. And we've had cases right here in Riverside County, too, of of young guys uh, that have been trafficked, the, the David Joder case, uh, where he was meeting young men at um, at skateboard parks. And uh, in his case, what he would do is uh, uh, give them knee pads and helmets, give them gifts, get them comfortable with him. Then they'd go over to his apartment. And by the way, he had a separate apartment just for this. And he would give them beer and pizza and they would engage and he would begin to talk to them about, you know, perhaps you're gay and they would engage and they would become enchanted with him. We also had another case, a big case. I was involved in this case a long time ago, Eliaberta Jacoba. Um, he is serving 122 years in prison. He was out of Hemet. And uh, in his case, he was using a fake Facebook page. And uh, he was pretending to be like Marlissa Garcia. And Marlissa was, according to Facebook, she was having a great time doing a lot of questionable sexual activity. And she would show you how to do this and make a lot of money. And well over a couple hundred kids here in Riverside, San Bernardino County contacted what they thought was Marlissa Garcia. This is a bit older case when kids were on Facebook. Just think how easy it is now with TikTok and all the others, you know, that's an that a older technology. But he would uh, encourage them, pretending to be the girl, he would encourage them to, you know, come out and uh, and try out a little commercial sex, have, have a, a good time and make some money. And a lot of our kids did, a lot of them. And uh, he recorded that and he would blackmail them and force them into prostitution. And that was right here in him at, in Riverside County. I, I will share with you about that case because many of you know, one of the things I do is go into schools and talk to kids. And uh, I do that because I want kids to know how it works so they can protect themselves. I don't want to scare them, but I want them to be aware, especially if they're, you know, 15, 16 years old, 
In this case, I was talking in a school and these young girls come up and handed me their phone and they were giggling. They thought it was a joke. And they came to me and they said, what do you think, Miss Singleton? Because we're just playing a game with these with this girl. And it, the girl was Marlissa Garcia. And I looked at that and I said, let me borrow your phone, OK? And I called my sergeant and they got all over it. And that's how we discovered more than 100 victims right here in the Inland Empire of our teenagers that were getting lured into this and then not only being blackmailed, but they were being put out for commercial sex, forced commercial sex. And that's how that happens. So your best bet is get to know your teenagers at your church. Talk to them and be be straightforward with them. Talk to them about their social media. Talk to them about how you have an empowering relationship and how you have an exploitive relationship. We we really have to do that because we don't teach kids what to look for and how this exploitation works. And that is really a lot of what we do here at Million Kids. We're able to do that because so many of you uh, support our work and help us and help us uh, do what we need to do to train others to get out there and get that word in school. So I believe nobody has to be a victim. I believe that this is a matter of educating our kids and then staying close by them and helping them understand when they are at risk, especially if they're meeting somebody up online where they're already in that fantasy relationship and they start to sneak out to meet up with them. That's where you can very quickly intervene. I honestly believe that no young person should be online unless the parent regularly checks their devices. And don't be afraid to do that. You're a parent. That's your role. And that's, you know, if you're getting them a device, then you're responsible for what takes place on that device. And the only way you're going to know what you're responsible for is to look at it and talk about it. You know, this is how we make good quality adults in our parenting is that we have these hard discussions and and uh, and come to terms with it so that our kids can grow up to be the kind of leaders we want them to be. Well, we're coming to the end of the hour. I want to thank each and every one of you that attended all the events this month. And uh, I'm, I think I'm going to take most of February off. That's not true. I'm working out in Beaumont High. But um, anyway, I want to thank each and every one of you that fund this program, fund this organization. You can donate to our organization at millionkids.org, M-I-L-L-I-O-N, millionkids.org. If you have something you want to share with me, you can do that at opal, O-P-A-L, at millionkids.org. Now, I am not 911, okay? You don't want to be given something very crit critical and urgent and trying to track me down because I do a lot of training. But let me give you those numbers. If you see something urgent, do not be afraid to report. If you see a drop house potential in your in your uh, community or somebody where they're doing a lot of commercial sex out of an apartment or a house, you know, call your local police department and let them know about that. But if you see something that, you know, what you just are suspicious of, but nobody's in immediate danger, you can report that and you can even report it anonymously at 1-888-3737-888. That's the national hotline for reporting all over the world, but it works throughout the U.S. And it doesn't matter whether it's child sexual abuse or uh, child pornography, or if you're thinking that you're seeing a drop house or somebody that might be being uh, uh, harmed in a, in, a, in a smuggling thing, or you're seeing signs that there's a residential or commercial uh, brothel in your area. Don't be afraid to report those things and report them anonymously. Don't go charging in there, okay? So, yes, trafficking is very real in our community. It is not at every street corner yet. <laughs> I hope it doesn't turn out that way. But I want you to know the facts and the misconceptions. The way that we help our kids stay out of it is we let them know we believe in them. Me and Kids logo is I Believe in You. And in fact, we sell challenge coins on this show. Uh, you can order them at millionkids.org. It says, I believe in you on one side, and it says, stand tall, you're loved on the other. And that's a message that many young people need to be able to hear and hear often, which is why we create these beautiful challenge coins. 
This is Opal Singleton. We're up against the end of the show, so we're going to see you next Saturday at 3 o'clock on AM 590. This message is all about Million Kids, the organization that helps locate missing kids throughout Southern California and educates to keep kids safe from predators. Million Kids educates school administrators, teachers, parents, and teenagers how predators identify a potential victim and the methods they use to recruit innocent kids. BMW of Riverside is a proud supporter of Million Kids. Visit BMW of Riverside at the Adams Street exit off the 91 freeway or click bmwofriverside.com.